Today we're drinking some real nice coffee from Madcap. Love this one, had it for so long. And we are gonna be talking today about the Chemex. The Chemex is honestly one of my favorite brewers and we're gonna go over today why and the history of it. I'm really excited. Hello all you beautiful people. I hope you have a nice smile on your face today and that you have a cup of coffee like I do. If you don't, then maybe you don't drink coffee, which if you don't, then thank you for being here, I guess. <laughs> but today, like I said, we're gonna be talking about the Chemex. Now, this brewer, it's interesting, I'll be honest. There are some really, it just it's just interesting. It's my first brewer, I've had it for literally almost four years, honestly and I've never broken it, which is shocking considering that it is fully glass except for this nice little brown collar thingy. I don't know what to call it. Um, it's fully glass. It is one of my favorite brewers, and here's why. So like I said, I've had it for four years. It is really durable. I have traveled with it. I haven't done, you know, like a, a backpacking trip or anything with it, but I've taken this every summer for since I've owned it back to camp. I put it in my check bag. It's gone on a flight made it there, never broken. I broke a grinder going to camp once, literally my first summer, but I've never broken this going to camp, which is, I don't know why I'm spinning it. I'm gonna drop it and break it during the show, <laughs> which would suck. But yeah, it's incredibly durable. Um, the background on the Chemex, I was doing a little research because I was intrigued and wanted to share some things with you. I, I didn't actually know how long this had been around for, so I was like, let's look it up. It's been around since 1941, y'all. Like. I mean, not this particular one right here, but like, dang, that's a long time. That's been around a while. It was invented by Peter Schlomberg. I can't pronounce his name, I'm sorry. And it's so special that the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, a museum, has this brewer on display. Yeah, I, that's what I thought too. Like, that's, a, that's crazy. There's a Chemex brewer in it. But then I like looked at it again, and granted mine's a little bit dirty, I'm sorry because I just used it, but like it is nice, it's got some nice figure to it, it's got a nice form, like it's very elegant, it's simple, like it feels like something that anyone could use. I'm gonna put it down before I break it. So one of the things that makes this brewer unique is the filter. And I forgot it, one second. <laughs> got it. So this filter, super cool. It is incredibly thick. For those of you that don't know anything about coffee filters, there's a lot of different kinds. There's this, um, there's also like Aeropress has a pretty thin one. It's like a little circle. Every, it seems that every brewer has their own filter. I mean, the Kalita has this little like wavy one, but this is one of the thickest filters you can get. I mean, like, just look at that, but like that is, that is a thick filter. Thick boy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it's a really thick filter, but, the nice thing about that is, um, well, the downside of that is that it does take a little longer to brew. An average Chemex they recommended on the website is like three and a half to five and a half minutes long, which that's a long time to wait for your coffee and for it to brew, but it's because it has such a thick filter. Um, but the benefit of this thick filter is that even though it is, you know, like 20, 30% thicker, um, it creates this super clarified cup of coffee. And if you don't know what clarification is, well, let me tell you. So basically, clarification of coffee is relating to the amount of actual like sediment that ends up in the coffee. Now sediment sounds like a really weird word, but there are sometimes you brew a cup of coffee, maybe it's like a French press or something else, because of the metal filter or you know the type of filter that you're using, there's a little bit of like coffee sediment. It's super, super fine. But when you drink it, it like, you know, it can create, continue the brew process. And then when you get to the very end, your drink doesn't taste the same. It's been a little over extracted. It's a little bitter. Ugh. And this is making me realize we should do um, an entire video about extraction. But basically with the Chemex filter, because it's so thick, you don't get any of those like sediments. There's nothing left again. Like I, every time I drink a cup of this coffee, all the way to the bottom, nothing there. Like you don't get a little of that like grit, that grain on your tongue, which I'm sure if you drank coffee for a while, you've gotten that and it's not, it's not pleasant. Like it does not taste good. But with this, like it creates that just oh, super clarified beverage. Oh, 
so nice, love it. So this right here is the eight cup Chemex. There's also a three, a six, and a 10, which is insane. Like that's so, that's so many different sizes to brew coffee. For me, I like, I always recommend the eight cup to people because you can make a single cup of coffee in it really nicely. But if you have some people over, you can brew multiple cups at the same time, which is probably one of the best reasons to buy this as your first brewer. Now, don't get me wrong, I love AeroPress, I love all the other ones, especially AeroPress for travel, mm, so good. But like this, if you only have one thing to use at home, use this, an AeroPress, you have to make one single cup of coffee at a time. And it's so tiring. Like if you have eight guests over, you are gonna be making eight individual AeroPresses, which gets really tiring and really boring, and then you're not with the group, and it's really sad. With this though, you can whip out two, three of these bad boys and be done for the evening. Um, it's really easy, which is honestly one of my favorite features. Granted, I don't use that a lot. Usually I'm brewing it for myself, but that's the nice thing is to have something so versatile that you can brew just a single cup for yourself like I did this morning, or I could go and triple that batch and brew for me, myself and I, oh my gosh. <laughs> This is how lonely I am right now, guys. This is how bored I am, that I'm making good coffee for myself three times because there's no one else to make it for, apparently. <laughs> but yeah, you can make so much coffee with this thing. So as you saw during the little intro sequence, I was brewing a Chemex and I'm, you know, this is the problem with making a video, you don't really get to drink coffee. It just, you know, it just sits there while you're recording the video. Unlike a podcast where I can just pause and just chug it and it doesn't matter. No one knows. But with the video, it's a little more obvious if I drink coffee. <laughs> but yeah, I made one of these at the beginning. So let's rewind back to the beginning. And I want a quick talk about how you brew this particular kind of coffee. As with any coffee, you need to get your water to the right temperature. For me, personally, I use 205. It's just a very plain industry standard. Gotta grind your coffee, pick whatever one you want. Some of you may have seen me use a, like a hand grinder and be wondering why I would use a hand grinder to grind this. Don't worry, I'll get all into grinding and everything in a later episode. But what you need to know with the Chemex is it does take a little longer to brew. Basically it extracts a lot of CO2. It's the first aromatics you'll get of the coffee. So give it a nice whiff. Ooh, it smells good. Um, but then I, I personally do another pour at one minute. No, sorry, 30 seconds and then another pour at a minute, and then my final pour at two minutes, and that gets me to 400 grams of uh, output of coffee with like water and coffee, you know what I'm trying to say. And then yeah, I enjoy it. It's simple, it's easy, granted it's, you know, you do need a little more supplies to make this work at home technically. You have to buy the Chemex, you have to buy the filters, and you need some kind of pouring kettle, but all that together, you can easily get for less than $65. The Chemex itself is like $45. The filters you can usually find for 10 to 15, except for right now, you literally cannot find these anywhere. It's ridiculous. It took me, it's a, like I ordered some three weeks ago and they still haven't gotten here, which is sad because I'm like, I'm running low, look at this. That's what I have left. It's like 15. That won't last very long, especially if I'm making videos about coffee. <laughs> but basically, this is a great first brewer for anyone. But yeah, this is the Chemex. Been around since 1941. Durable, travelable, um, great for your first coffee maker. There's also multiple brew sizes. And how can you not go wrong with a brewer that's in a museum in New York? I mean, like, just think about that, you know? Just get back to me about, about what you think about that, because that's crazy to me, that's insane. Thank you all so much for watching. I, as always, really appreciate it. Uh, please give the, the blog a follow if you have not already. Um, there will be new postings every Friday. Super excited about the blog. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, the link is below. All the th things I use on a daily basis to make coffee will always be linked in the description. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like, share this with someone who might also enjoy coffee. And we will be talking on Wednesday about the birth of coffee and where coffee originated. Let me tell you, the story starts with some goats that get a little cray cray. So, you know, come back on Wednesday. It's gonna be a really good episode. I'm really excited. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you all in the next episode. Stay safe, have fun, love you all, bye.